Turn with me to the book of Judges. The book of Judges. The book of Judges, chapter 8. I'm going to read verse 4, and then we're going to look at the entire um, pericope, which is verses 4 through uh, 12, and then we'll also we'll focus on verse 28. I'll read one verse, and I'll expound with the help of the Lord. Boy, y'all some good looking. My gosh, have you ever seen a choir look this good before? My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Amen. Judges 8. Gideon and his 300 men exhausted yet yet keeping up the pursuit came to the Jordan and what? Came to the Jordan and what? Today for a few moments will you meditate with me on the topic tired but not finished. Tired but not finished. Let us pray. God thank you. God bless you. Open our hearts and minds to receive from you. Now may the words of my mouth be an example of the meditations of my heart. And may they be acceptable in your sight. As a matter of fact, oh God, we know that word is like food for our souls. So we thank you for this food we're about to receive, for the nourishment of our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. James Cleveland put it this way. I don't feel no ways tired. I've come too far from where I started. And then it goes on to say, nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. Come on, church, let me hear you say it. I don't feel Nobody told me So many of you all have heard me talk on numerous occasions. Maybe you're even tired of me talking about this, but I am a runner. And on next Saturday, or this coming Saturday, I plan to run my third marathon, 26.2 miles. Now, now, now don't, don't clap until next Sunday when, when I completed the thing. Amen. I appreciate your prophetic claps, uh, but I may have a collapse. Uh, and, and y'all gonna have to help a brother up, amen. And 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 one of the things. So so one of the things that you have to do in preparing for a marathon is that you must um, go through a rigorous training course. It, uh, many say that if you're a rookie, you can take six months to prepare. And those who have a little bit of experience like me, they recommend at least 12 weeks. And and in that 12 weeks, you're gonna average somewhere about 35 to 40 miles of running each week crescendoing at a 20 to 22 mile run, and then two weeks before the actual race, you begin to taper. And so I am running five, six days a week. I'm running a minimum of five miles each time. And again, I crescendoed up to a 20 mile run just a couple of Saturdays ago. And, and it's interesting, as I run through my neighborhood, and you know, um, Tanisha got me living in a hood, so I, I kind of just run in my neighborhood and just kind of zigzag and, you know, and it's amazing because as I'm running and I'm zigzagging to try to get the miles in because I don't want to go too far out the neighborhood, amen, let the church say, I understand. <laughs> you know, you, you meet people and you see people and you see familiar faces and people see you in the grocery store and say, are you the guy that be running all over the place? And, and, and so my neighbor, we live on the corner house and my neighbor 
sees me quite a bit. And one day I was leaning on the wall right in front of my home in the corner uh, after I had finished running. And he says, um, are you almost finished? I said, yes. I said, um, the race is next Saturday. And I said, I have almost finished uh, my training. He says, man, congratulations. It, you're, you're completed. I said, I said, no, I haven't completed. I've completed this phase, but there's still more work to be done. Yeah. And it's interesting because the last two weeks before you run your race, they tell you you have to start this thing called tapering. You have to begin to pull back because your body and your mind is tired and they want you to build up strength um, so that you can go to the next level. You didn't get it. And what I want you to understand is that sometimes we're tired and sometimes we're exhausted, but yet our work is unfinished. Y'all with me on that? And some people want to pause and celebrate um, too quickly, but when you still have work to do, even when you're tired, how do you move forward? How do you keep on keeping on when you are already exhausted? Are you all with me? Has anyone other than me ever been tired and yet you still got work to do? How many of y'all are just sick and tired of just some of the stuff you've been dealing with? I'm tired of looking at my account and there's more month then money. I am tired of having to tell people the same thing over and over and over again. I'm tired of turning on the television and seeing the same idiotic people making the same idiotic statements about the same idiotic issue that no one seems to care about solving. They just want to talk about it. I'm tired of all these people who can say anything and do anything to anybody and yet not be held accountable. I'm tired of hearing about ignorant supervisors who are going to try to evaluate me when they need to be evaluating themselves. Come on, somebody. I'm tired of running back and forth to the doctor's office and the dentist's office. Anyone other than me get tired of some stuff. I'm tired about hearing folks getting shot and killed over senseless stuff. I am tired. Anyone other than me get tired. And yet, even though I'm tired, there is still work to be done. If you look at the life of Gideon, I'm only going to preach for a few minutes. You say amen. I told you I preach fast. Say amen. amen. It's too late. Don't have me ask you again. Now listen. Here in the text, Gideon, you, you know Gideon. Gideon is the one who was called by God to free his people from the control of the Midianites. And, 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 and Gideon um, accepted the call. And it's interesting, when he called Gideon, when he called Gideon, Gideon was working a, in the wine press. Let me translate to today's modern language. The brother worked at the liquor store. (laughs) Amen. He dealt with spirits. Let the church say, whoo, I know. Mm Mm-hmm. And don't act like you don't know. Amen. Amen. And and, and his co-workers was Alizé and Hennessy. Come on now. Um, and, and let me, can I just pause for a minute, Brandon, for one moment? It's amazing that God does this amazing work with Gideon, and he calls him from working in the liquor store, if you will, to do an amazing work. So let me pause and tell you, don't you ever judge somebody from where they are because you don't know what God can do and how God can use them. God does amazing things. He calls folks from unusual places to do great things. So you may have started in the projects, but that don't mean that you can't be God's project for great things ahead. Are you all with me? Amen. And and, and here, I'm almost finished. No, I'm not. I just wanted to encourage you. Um, And here Gideon accepts the call. And he he begins to tell God, yo, God, I'm ready for this call. And I got 32,000 folks who got this thing. He says, that's too many. And he wills it down to 300 people. And the Bible teaches us that Gideon, in chapter 7, goes in and faces the, um, the Amalekites and the Midianites, and they defeat thousands upon thousands of people with just 300. And here we get to verse, uh, chapter, um, uh, verse number 4, and it says, uh, Then Gideon and the 300 men who were with him came to the Jordan and crossed over it, weary yet pursuing. Stop for a moment. What's, what, what's happening here, what's happening here is that he had just killed over 100,000 people with 300 people. A great victory. They're tired 
and they're worn out. And as, as a matter of fact, uh, the word tired um, is ayefe. It is, it's the Hebrew word ayefe, which means tired, exhausted, worn out, to be running on empty. As a matter of fact, it is, it is being so tired that you don't even pronounce the R when you tell folks. <laughs> Y'all know you have been so tired that you can't even say you tired. You just say, I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anybody ever in here been tired? Yeah. Amen. And then it goes on to tell us in this text that, 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 that he is... He's tired, but yet there is still work to do. I want to pause for a moment and say something. It's interesting because some of us are already tired of 2019 and we're only six weeks in. <laughs> some of us are tired of, of lying to folks that we're still on our diet. Hey, man, you thought you would at least make it to March. Come on, some, anybody other than me thought you could make it at least through March. Hey, Amen. You, you got black history much? You thought you'd get some black power in yet? All right, whatever. Yeah, yeah, y'all be tripping, but you know I'm telling the truth. Um, and, 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 and what I want you all to know is how do you get a sense of energy and a sense of of accomplishment. How do you keep on keeping on when you are tired? And here's some of the things that we learn from the life of Gideon. The first thing I want you all to write down is that when uh, we are in this state, we must recognize that we must go back and complete past projects. Mm. We, 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 we have to go back and complete past projects. Let me see if it makes sense to you all. In chapter 7, he has this great victory. Now in chapter 8, he has still got some work to do. What, what, what happened is you'll see that the Bible teaches us that Zeba and Zamuna, uh, the kings of the Midianites, they got away during the fight. And they run to a, another land with, with, with some of their army. And, and even though the battle had been won, there's still some loose ends to tie up. And some of us, are always going to be tired because there's some stuff we got to deal with from our past that we got to tie up, that we got to put to an end, we got to deal with. There's some I's that got to be dotted, some T's that got to be crossed, some folks you got to deal with, some apologies that got to give in, some notes you got to write, some doctors you got to see. Some of us will always be tired because we haven't handled the fullness of our assignment. We try to take on a new assignment before we finish the current assignment. Anybody other than me know you try to take on that? So, so, so let me tell you, and that is not only true with work, that's not only true in life, but that's also true with your heart. I was talking to a guy just the other day, and um, he calls me, and he tells me, he says, Pitts, I found her. I said, who? <laughs> he said, the one. I said, where was she? Is she, is she lost? He said, no, I found, he says, you know, and, and, and the thing that's interesting, he's just coming off of a divorce and, and, and just broke up with his girlfriend that caused a divorce. Now, he tells me all about her, and this girl is bad. She's impressive, and she's a brick house, and she's smart, and she's everything that any man would want to have. But he got some unfinished business. He got some projects of the past. And as a friend who loves him, I simply asked him a question. Are you going to give her what she deserves? He started telling about what he can afford to purchase. I said, no. Are you going to give her your heart? And are you going to break all the chains um, and, and rebuild the bridges that you broke in the past so that you can be fully hers? Some of us are always going to be in bad relationships because we haven't ended the ones we got out of. I'm going to move to the next one because y'all ain't, y'all not working with me and stuff. So, so, so he had to go, um, he had to go and, and, and go to the land of Nabal to, um, 
finish and take out Zeba and Zamuna. And, and, and it was important that, that the victory wasn't over because the leaders had gone on and they had to take out the entire army. Are you all with me on that? And so we must complete our past projects. What is left in the background that you haven't done that's wearing you out? Number two, write this down. The Bible tells us in this text in verses five through nine that, that, that it's interesting that, um, um, that he goes to a place called Succoth. And in that place, he asked the people of that land to give his army, his men, um, some bread. And, 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 and as he's passing through this, this town and passing through this city, he asked those to feed him and to take care of him and to look out for him and his men, and they said no. Hmm. The second thing you must do is recognize that not only must you complete past projects, but you must separate yourself from problem people. Let me see. In order for us, because what you ought to understand, that as they were going into the land of Jordan, in verse 4, it says they're going to cross over the Jordan. Jordan represents a new season, a new, uh, a new era, new opportunities. And, 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 and sometimes you can't get those new opportunities until you complete past projects. And, but you also got to separate yourself from problem people. Now, it's interesting because there are some folks in here that are always associating themselves with folks who are problematic. And our Dean Joe Curry just shared with my class this, earlier this week. She said, if you want to be successful, you got to hang around successful people. You, 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 you want to get to the next level, you got to hang with folks who have next level thinking. We, if, come on, somebody. If you got big ideas, you can't share them with small minded. If you know someone, you got. afraid to cut folks off because, you know, when, when, people, when you have to cut folks off, you become paralyzed. Amen. Because you, you, you're looking to be accepted and looking to be liked. And sometimes God has to separate you from folks so that you're not worried about who like you, but you're worrying about what God would do for you. And that you can complete the assignment that God gave you, even if you got to do it all by yourself. Now, here's the thing that's a trip. The thing that's a trip is the very people that he asked to help him were his own people. They were Israelites. They worshiped the same God, came from the same, the same root and some of the same people, and yet he asked them to feed my folks who just delivered a victory in the, peop- in the name of our people, and yet you won't feed my people. How many of y'all have been hurt? Because you thought your people would have your back. And what I want to tell you here today, on this Sunday morning, there's some folks you got to separate yourself from. There's some problematic folks. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to go it alone. And I'm going to tell you that he learned this. He learned this in the previous chapters. Because if you remember, Gideon came with 32,000. God whittled it down to 300. In other words, God said, if you believe that I got your back, you ain't got to worry about who else got your back. He says, you can go it alone if you believe in me. I'll take you where you need to go, even if you got to go there all by yourself. Sometimes you have to encourage Who you need to be separated from? Where God trying to take you? Some folks can't go with you. You might have to tell somebody today. You might have to pull out your phone and text someone and say, I love you, but I got to go. I can't stay here. And then they're going to be mad because they're going to start singing, you abandoned me. Love don't live here anymore. That's not gospel. I thought that was, I thought that was him number 470. No. <laughs> Amen. You can't let folks stop you. you know, one, 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 one thing. And, and let me tell you one more thing. I'm, 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 I'm going to close. I'm going to go to this last point. The other thing is that you can't beg folks to be with you. 
You can't beg folks to help you. Lose your dignity begging someone to help you when God said he already got your back. One of the biggest lessons I had to learn myself and my personality and my children that have this, this, this character blessing and this character flaw is that you ain't got to beg nobody to like you. You ain't got to sell yourself out to be a part of no group, no clique, no organization, no fraternity, no sorority, no nothing. You got to be comfortable with yourself and God. Come on, somebody. Me and my Bible, I may cry, but I'm going to trust in you. Come on, somebody. I may feel alone, but you said that you would never leave me nor forsake me, and I'm standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Come on, somebody. Y'all with me on that? Y'all, please, don't beg nobody to be your friend. Beg nobody to give you. You know, it, it's what the, can I, can I, 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 this ain't even in my notes. I just want to just kind of say this because this is, this is deeply instilled in me. I, I remember, uh, and I, anyone who's ever been with me, whenever I see people who are out on the street asking for money or asking for provisions, I always say, stop. Just tell me what you need. I don't need the store. You ain't got to beg me. If I can do it, I'm going to do it. If I can, I can and then and my children said, well, why do you do that? I said, even though this person is homeless, even though this person is destitute, even though this person is down to his last or her last dime, they ain't got to beg me for nothing. I'm not going to sap nobody of their dignity. Come on, somebody. If I can help you, I'll help you. And if you do something with it that you ain't supposed to do with it, that's between you and the Lord. Come on, somebody. And sometimes you just simply got to separate yourself because you get tired of trying to beg folks. Y'all with me on that? Am I the only one that's going to get some help up in here? Amen. And then, so, so how can you do this? How, how can you move when you're tired? Well, you got to finish past projects. You can't go into the place of Jordan without finishing your past projects. And you got to separate yourself from these problem people. Y'all know some problem folks? Hey, man, them, them addicted to drama. Y'all not supposed to be addicted to, to drama. But the last you must reflect on previous provisions. Lord have mercy. I'm, I'm done. This is some good stuff right here. You, you got to reflect on previous provision. Uh, um, never forget what God has done for you in the past. Dr. Eanes talked about um, remembering the sacrifices of her grandparents and her parents and her great-grandparents and that we stand on an incredible heritage of folks who have come this far by faith, leaning and trusting on the Lord. That's why God always reminded the folks when they had to go through something. He says, remember, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You, you got a heritage. He, he told Isaiah, have you not seen? Have you not heard? I am the everlasting God, the God who have brought you through. The Come on, somebody. I am the God who led you out of slavery. I am the God who gave you manna from high. I am the God you got a history with. And you know that you must remember your past provisions so you have the strength to get tomorrow's promises. Does that make sense? And here's right here in the text, right here in the text. I told you, and it's interesting because he, he tells the people, he said, all right, y'all not going to hook me up? You don't give me no bread? Well, go on. He said, did he threaten? He says, and he says, and when I go and cross over and I come back and you see that God has gotten my back because he remembered the past provisions, he says, he says, you're going to be looking like a fool. How you like me now? You passed me when I was on a bus stop. Now I'm rolling. Come on now. And, and so here's the text. Look, here's the, I'm closing on this. Here's the text. There's, there's three places that they mention here in, the, in this text. The Jordan, Sucloth, and Peniel. Listen. Peniel is the place where Joseph, uh, Jacob wrestled God. Watch this. Sukkoth is a place that God gave to Gad and he didn't have to fight for him. He gave him some land that he didn't even have to fight for. just gave it to him. 
And, 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 and then the Jordan is the place of the miracle. <laughs> so he's in the midst of this stuff, and he remembered the provision. He remembered the place of the miracle. And he remembered the place of, of Sukkot, or the place of God, which is the place of grace, that you got something that you didn't even have to fight for, that you didn't even earn. And then he remembered, Pinio, that, 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 he's, he's, that Jacob is fighting and wrestling with God, and he should have been killed, but God granted him mercy. And now you can move forward when you're tired and remember your blessing file, the files of miracles, the miracles that God has given you. You can, you can move from one place to another place, from a place of being tired. When you have a file, you go back and remember the miracles that God had performed in your life. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all might say, I ain't got no miracles in my life. Yes, you do. One miracle is you woke up this morning. It's a miracle that you was born healthy. Come on, somebody. The miracle that you made it out the neighborhood that you grew up in. Amen. How many of y'all got folks that did not make it out of your neighborhood? And yet God has given you a miracle. How many have been sick and God has healed you? How many times has someone wrote you off? How many of you all have lost your job and, 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 you, and, and your severance and your unemployment ran out before you got another job and you shouldn't be here, but yet? by God's incredible, miraculous power in your life. So you have to remember the miracles. Now you may say, well, Reverend, I don't have no miracles, and you, you know, it ain't happened for me like that yet. Well, just remember someone else's miracle, because what he has done for others, he'll do for you. That's why I celebrate when someone else gets blessed, because I know mine is coming. Amen. I hear about you pouring out blessings. Let some drops fall my way. Y'all with me on that? Not only that, Jordan represents the miracles, and then, and then Sukkot represents a uh, 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 grace. How many of y'all have uh, gotten something you didn't deserve? How many of you got a foul folder filled with stuff that you have gotten that you did not deserve? And so he can move on because he realized that he has got some grace, that he didn't deserve. It, it, it's, 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 y'all, y'all don't know about grace you didn't deserve. Let me, let me see if I can help someone here today. Uh, uh, um, I, heard, I heard a preacher talk about um, how he took a class that was so hard um, that he, he, he spelled the name of the class wrong on his test paper. I mean, come on, that's, that's a hard class. And, and, and then he, he, he goes on to say that they, the, the, test was, the class was so hard and, and the teacher was so difficult that, 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 um, that, 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 that there was only five questions on the final exam. Dr. Bender, and, and, and he says there's a strategy that you have to read the questions that you can answer first, kind of gives you some confidence. He said he read all five questions, turned the paper upside down and read again, and, and he didn't know what to do. And so he decided that he would just take anything he heard in the class and in the class before that class and the class after that class and just put it on the paper. He put some stuff from English on that paper and some stuff, come on somebody, from his math class on that paper. He just started adding stuff. He said, anything I'd ever experienced in college, I just put it on that paper. He said it was so bad he couldn't even cheat <laughs> because he wasn't sure that anyone else knew what to do. You know it's bad when you came in, you're afraid to cheat, not because you're going to get caught, because you don't think the person next to you know what they're doing. <laughs> and he, and he, he said when he got his grade of a C minus, he could not believe he got a C minus. He was praising God, and, 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 and he discovered that he did not earn a C minus on his own merit. He actually got an F on the test. But the teacher graded on a curve. <laughs> Woo! And the F became a C minus because God gave him grace. Grace is getting something <laughs> that you don't deserve. When you're tired, remember that you have a foul folder of grace, a foul folder of miracles, and a foul folder of mercy. Come on, somebody. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. How many of y'all have gotten 
over some things. You, you should have been dead and gone. You should have got the ticket. You should have got fired. You should have been walked out on. You should have been divorced. But God, come on, somebody. Remember, remember that there's some past projects we must complete. There are some problem people we must separate from. But always reflect on God's previous provisions. And that's how we can handle unfinished business when we're tired. And then he says, Amen. That God promised that he'd give us rest, rest for our souls.